the USS Tunney, SSG-282, completes another successful mission, the launching of the Regulus guided missile. This launch is a climax to the total story of the Tunney Regulus project. A tactical operation of the USS Tunney begins with the delivery of the missile dockside at the United States Naval Advanced Base Depot, Fort Wyneme, California. The missile is received from Guided Missile Unit 50, where system checks and reliability runs have been completed. The missile is now ready for flight. Missile men from the submarine take over and prepare the Regulus for sea. First, the JATO booster bottles must be installed. This operation must be done on the dock, as at present it is impractical to align the boosters in the cramped working spaces on a rolling submarine at sea. An alignment jig to permit alignment at sea is under development by CDA. Careful alignment of the booster in relation to the center of gravity of the missile is required for a successful launching. A sighting target is assembled and installed underneath the belly of the regular. The sight itself must be carefully assembled and then mounted on the nozzle of the booster. The thrust is put in line through the center of gravity as the crew chief sights through the alignment jig. The regulus is now ready to be loaded aboard as all other work can be accomplished in the hangar. With the aid of a dockside crane, the regulus is hoisted, swung out, and lowered to the submarine. It is lowered onto the loading tray. This loading tray is used only to run the missile onto the launcher. The regulus is then run from the loading tray onto the launcher. The tail fin is folded and the regulus retracted from the launcher into the hangar on matching track. The hangar door closes and the crew proceeds with final inspection before putting to sea. Inside the hangar, the regulus is swung to an inverted position and checked for loose connections and fittings. Then, if no other missiles are to be brought aboard, it is rotated back to the horizontal position for further checks underway. The USS Tunney SSG-282, with regulus aboard, is now ready for sea. The lines are cast off. The Tunney backs clear, then heads out of the harbor. Once clear of the harbor, the Tunney submerges for a tactical mission. Ninety minutes prior to launch, missile men man checkout stations. The umbilical cable is connected. This cable carries all the leads between the missile and the missile guidance center necessary to conduct the pre-flight check. The same cable and connections are used when the missile is in the hangar as when on deck. The electronic checkout cables are plugged into the regular. After internal power has furnished the missile from the missile center, the missile circuits are energized. An electronic technician at the missile, in communication with the missile officer, energizes various circuits and makes necessary pre-launch adjustments. Automatic functions of climb, altitude, and throttle are checked. The airspeed and altitude simulator is used for these checks. Trounce guidance from the trounce console is checked. Commands for right and left turn, warhead arm, and missile dump are set. The results are monitored both at the missile and here in the missile center. A low voltage is impressed on the firing circuit to check the continuity of both rocket booster circuits. The value of the current is recorded and this is checked just prior to firing. The firing circuit is actuated from the missile center and checked at the missile. Meanwhile, at periscope depth, the commanding officer makes a check of the launching area. 30 minutes before launching time, battle stations are manned and igniters are brought up from below deck stowage and installed in the boosters. Hangar checks are completed and the missile is buttoned up. The umbilical cable is disconnected inside the hangar. Electronic check cables are pulled clear. 
The controls for operating the hangar door and ramming the missile are manned and checked. Meanwhile, the boat's navigator makes the final check on position. Missile guidance stations are manned and ready. Report from the missile center to Khan, manned and ready. One final sweep by the commanding officer, and the signal is given to surface. Tunney, using battle surface procedures, breaks water stern first. When the stern is sufficiently clear, the hangar door is opened on command from the conning tower. With the door in the fully open position and the missile tracks in place, the missile ramming operation is commenced. The operations which follow are of necessity presented in this film in a step-by-step -step fashion. Actually, many of these operations are conducted simultaneously. This can be appreciated when you consider that the total on-surface time required under tactical conditions is only from seven to 10 minutes. A man in the hangar actuates the outboard door of the umbilical cable receptacle located in the side of the hangar. The same umbilical cable which was used for the hangar check is now used for the top side pre-launch check. The tail fin is manually erected and locked in place. By automatic control from the missile center, the wings are unfolded and locked. To conserve the missile fuel for actual flight, external fuel is connected for the pre-launch engine warm-up. The lanyards being connected here actuate various safety and guidance system functions as the missile is launched. The umbilical cable is too large to be pulled away by the launching motor. Hence, the special air eject system is connected. This is actuated from the missile center just prior to launching. A blast deflector shield to prevent warping of the hangar door during engine run-up is bolted in place. A man in the after engine room elevates the launcher to the firing position. A check is made to assure no voltage across the firing circuit before final connection is made. Then the final top side connection in the firing circuit is made and the deck is cleared. Final inspection is made and the hangar door is closed. The engine is started and checked at 60% and 100%. At this point, the submarine is entirely sealed and ready to dive as soon as the launch has been completed. The umbilical cable is ejected from the missile and from the hangar receptacle. The firing circuit is closed. After the boosters have burned out, the boosters and the missile slippers are ejected. Before the launcher is lowered, the tunny submerges to avoid any possible detection. Seconds after launch, tunny assumes South Radar Command guidance of Regulus in flight. Only the radar and radio antenna break the surface. To supplement the automatic control which is being affected by a computer, a careful plot is maintained on tunny. Centrally located at a VJ radar repeater in the missile center of the tunny is the missile guidance officer. He coordinates the efforts of the radar operators, the computer operator, and the plotting team. He also has communication with the guidance submarines located downrange. On board Carbonero, missile track is acquired and reported to Tunney. Tunney turns over control to Carbonero, where track and control is maintained until the mission is accomplished.